Sophia, and today we are playing a game called The Beginner's Guide. Now, I have never heard of this game, but supposedly, the same people who made Stanley Parable made this, and I love Stanley Parable. So, this is gonna be pretty great, I guess. We'll see. If they're back at it again, then this will be good. Please make sure audio is on. Oh, audio is on. Don't worry, friend. I, I can hear just fine. And I did a test recording. Okay, basic controls. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. No problem! My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. Hmm. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, uh. and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. Uh. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? I don't know. This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. Okay. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. How did he and I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. How do you know so, all of this? You know, how this you was just how he worked. Then? He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Okay. But if he didn't upload it to the internet, how did you get a hold of it? He just will let you... Warning, whisper machine. So what? Warning, whisper machine active. Oh, okay, we're just going right into this. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Okay. The story, bro, but... You can click to fire the gun. I know, but there's nothing to shoot at. I'm not gonna waste ammo. There a flashlight in here? Security call breached. Uh oh. This isn't good. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. Exactly. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. Which is why I wasn't shooting. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. 
and I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin evacuation. How did you get a hold of it? He's I your love friend. You can see the bottom study. of the universe from this room. Yes. But anyways, um, excuse me, just back it up for a second. How did you get access to all of this? You said he's your friend, right? Apparently the space station has a labyrinth on it. Yeah. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Thanks, hun. I appreciate that. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Uh, should I put down my coffee for this? Because I don't want to spill it all over my laptop if you're gonna freaking jump scare me. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? I guess so, but here's my question. Why don't you just find the off switch? Let me yes. pause here for a second. Find the off switch. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. What happens? Nothing. I'm flo- Oh no, I'm floating! Oh my goodness! Okay then. Oh wait, The beam what? causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically Look, a glitch, labyrinth. but Coda identifies something human about it, like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this, this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something no, lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Wait, is this the running joke of the game? That, like... <laughs> that all of these games will never be finished or never finished? Is this just a hodgepodge of projects? Because basically that's what he says it is, but like, is Coda even real or is this a hodgepodge of what he's doing? So try walking backwards. The past is behind her. Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. Why? Why would you do this? Who would make a game like this? So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. When she stops and looks, it becomes clear. Back it up, back it up. But the fu but if the future is always behind her, how will she find the strength to confront it? It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. This is very Slender-esque. I already don't like this. You are now entering... what? Good thing my coffee is away from me at this moment. And that's it! Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. 
Please be patient with me it's for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Literally, it's just a sign. There is nothing more to that. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Well, I mean, I guess you're trying to support your friend, but why do... The thing is, it's the Stanley parable, dude. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. None of this makes sense. Wow. Wow. Yeah, A room that's warm and nice, and filled with little ideas for games. A lot of these were in Stanley Koda Parable. would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. You are the queen dusting your jewelry. Key in the game. The key in one game unlocks the door to a completely different game. Some of these games have been made, though. Like the one uh, with the queen dusting her. Not with the queen dusting her jewelry, but the one with. Ah, uh, the bear. That one was the one with the pup. Was the puppy level in Stanley Parable, and then um. Shoot, there was another one that I had seen someone made it, or something like it. It was similar. Okay, why are we in SCP Containment Breach? Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Dude, it's, it's not a puzzle. You pull the lever. I don't like the black smoke! Uh, I can't open the door? I can't... Okay, there's no lever in here. Uh, okay. Is there another leaper anywhere? I can't see, I should be able to just walk right through, right? I pulled the lever and the other door is not open. Can I shut myself in the room? I have now locked myself in this room. Aha! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're gonna see it a lot. What about the- what are these dots on the wall? So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Yeah. Alright, 
Now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Why? Oh, geez. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? To play the game. And enjoy it. And have fun. Why are we back here? You are not like today. Aha! Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. Troll? And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. The Great and Lovely Descent. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Okay. Makes sense. That's to make all enough. of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with why what the engine does well. Why is there a puzzle in the well. basement of this restaurant? The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. making a thing like with adventure book i worked with what i had available to me and what i knew how to use i knew how to use minecraft and camera angles that's what i did but now i have a new set of tools it's called blender and i'm going to be trying from now on to animate adventure bug which is why it's taking so long to get it out but back then when I started Adventure Book, I didn't know how to use Blender. I still don't know how to use Blender. I've been trying to learn for about three weeks, and I only now just got all the character models finished. I haven't even done rigging. I haven't started animating. All I have is a script and a bunch of Minecraft characters. But you see, that's where every everyone has to start somewhere. But the point is that you start. Start somewhere. Use what you have available. Yeah, it might be crappy tools, but... You'll never know if you even want to get the better tools if you don't know you like it. So just start somewhere. Just anywhere. Start somewhere. Anywhere. If you're a writer, start on Wattpad. Start writing on note your notepad in your laptop. Just start and go for it. Because once you figure out what you love, you're going to be able to move forward from there. But if you never start, you'll never know that you loved it. So even if you start with crappy tools and it doesn't look that great at the beginning, you're gonna get better with time. So don't give up and keep going.
This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. Why would it do that? If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? Makes and so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. Well, I mean, you both have a good point. If you put so much tender loving care into these games, they should be playable. But that depends on your definition of playable. If playable to you is just being able to walk around and interact with objects, you could put a ball in a, in a room and call it playable. You know? You won't even have to decorate it. It could just be a white room with a ball, not technically It's played. the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. It might not have. I mean, it could be just copying and pasting in a puzzle. Save some time, or maybe it was a placeholder. For a different puzzle. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Did you come from above? What was there? I just meant to... Okay. Did you have to get through puzzles with two doors and switches? Tell us how to get to the other side. I don't remember how he solved it. I'm trying to remember, but I can't. I can remember! Must be an ending. I promise you, there's nothing I want more. But literally, the other side, it's just a prison. There is no end. Puzzle you have to pass through. Yes, do you want to know how to solve it? No, no, we actually want to find the black space in between the doors. You can find where you can see it yet. Yeah, okay. What even is this game? So we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Okay. It's a lamppost. Yeah, it's pretty. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but. For some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. 
I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and yeah, maybe you can only yeah. float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. So all the games for now on We're going to see it in the work the as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Okay.